Welcome to Getting Started with Scrivener, Part 2, Setting Up Your Scrivener Project Using the Fiction Templates. I'm Vanessa Keir. In the last video, I showed you how to set up your Scrivener project using the blank template. In this video, I'm going to talk about the fiction templates, which are novel, novel with parts, and short story. So let's go over to Scrivener and see what these look like. So let's take a look at the fiction templates. I have several custom templates in here, so only these um, templates that have the colored icon are the standard Scrivener ones. So you have novel, novel with parts, and short story. And let's go ahead and take a look at the novel. So you'll notice several different things about this template. First of all, instead of just having this left side, which is the binder, and this center area, which is the editor, you also now have the inspector, which is this right-hand side. In addition, the first document in your binder is this novel format template, and it explains a little bit about how to use this. So if you've never used Scrivener before, it's worth going through and reading this. And you can see here that the first sentence actually talks about um, that when you compile it, it's going to automatically compile to a standard manuscript format. So that's another thing you get when you choose a template, but you can make any changes to that as you wish if you need to tweak things for your specific project. And if you don't know what compile means, compile basically is Scrivener's term for taking all of your project data and applying any special formatting you want and then outputting it in a format such as a Word doc, a PDF, an EPUB, whatever. So if we go back over to our binder, you'll see that the draft folder has been renamed Manuscript, and then they've created one sample chapter for you and one scene. And the chapter and the scene have different icons because the chapter is a folder and the scene is a document. Then below that, and if we um, click the arrow to the left of manuscript to close the subdocuments, you'll see that all of these folders here are at the same level of hierarchy in the binder. So that means that this characters folder is outside of the manuscript. And if you remember in the first video, I said only areas outside of the manuscript can get images. So if you wanted to, you could put some character images into this folder. You'll also notice that it has a nice little picture icon, and that is part of the custom icon set that comes with Scrivener. And the characters folder right now is blank, as is the places folder. Then you have this front matter folder, and there's three um, subfolders. You have your manuscript format, so it comes with a sample title page that you could fill in. And your paperback has the title page, the copyright, the dedication, and then a blank page in case you need that to make sure that they all, that your first chapter starts on the right hand side. And then you have your ebook, which would have a cover. Again, because it's outside of the manuscript, you're allowed to put an image here and then a dedication if you wanted to. Um, this is this notes folder is something you'll only see in Scrivener 3. So if you have an older version of Scrivener for the Mac, you won't see that. And if you are on um, the Windows version as of the recording of this video, which is June 2018, um, you won't see this either. So, um, when Scrivener 3 comes to Windows, I expect that that will be in there. And then you'll notice that there is now a subfolder under the research folder called sample output. And this is just an example of what a standard manuscript might look like. And so this, this will give you an idea when you do the compile, what the standard manuscript output will end up looking like. And this is the same thing, but for a paperback novel. And then down here, you have another folder that you didn't have in the blank template. You have your template sheets. So these are a basic character sketch. It has some basic pieces of data that you might want to track for your characters and then a setting sketch. 
these are set up as templates so that it is easy to use a um, start a new document as a template um, when you're creating a new document. So you don't have to retype all of this information. You're just pulling it up as your foundation document and then filling it in per your character or your setting, whatever. So if this is something that if you're writing a novel, or as I said in the first video, if you're maybe using a memoir format, but you want to keep information about characters, um, this format could be helpful for you. There's also this novel with parts template. And if you remember from the first video, I was saying if you use a three act structure, um, this might be something that you would want to use. So the novel with parts template is very similar to the novel template. There's just a couple of differences. As you can see here, you have the manuscript and then you have a part folder and then two chapter folders as sub folders and then they have scenes underneath them and then there's a second part. And with any of these templates, you can add a folder or add a document as you need. That's what this green plus sign up here is for. And then you do a drop down and you choose what type of new document or item you want to create. And then again, you've got characters, places, front matter, notes, research. So none of this stuff from characters down is any different for this structure. It's just these part folders. And again, when you go to compile, it will compile to a standard manuscript format. And there's one more fiction template that I'm going to take a look at here, the short story. So you can see that there's just a couple differences in the short story template. It has the manuscript, but then it just has a single scene, which is a single document. Front matter, again, there's no subfolders down here. There's just this first page header. And then under research, there's just one sample PDF. So that concludes this video on how to set up a Scrivener project using one of the fiction templates. I hope you found it helpful. In the next video, I'll talk about how to set up a nonfiction project using their templates. Until next time, happy writing. Bye.